In this video, we are going to learn how to find the resultant force of system of forces using the force component approach. Okay, so in this case here, each of the forces will have components in the principal directions. Okay, let's say if I have the xy plane here, okay, xy plane here, okay, so each of these forces here will have components in the x direction and then have components in the y direction okay so if you have a system of forces in this way we can resolve the component into the x component and then the y component then we add all the x components separately then we add all the y components separately then after that we can calculate for the actual resultant force okay which will be the magnitude of the resultant force and then we can calculate for its angle also so let's look at how you are going to do this so first of all i resolve each of the forces into their component okay so i'll start with f1 and then you know f1 makes an angle of what 23 degrees with the horizontal so let's look at this so i have my x as is here and then I have my y as is here okay so let's draw the force f1 so i have my f1 here which means an angle of 23 degrees okay so this is f1 and then that has a magnitude of 200 newton okay so what will happen is that f1 will have two components okay which is one in the x direction and the one in the y direction so let's indicate that so this is the first component here and then this is the second component so this is the component in the x as direction which i'll name as f1 x let me write this okay f1 x and then f1 y okay so these are the components of the force f1 in the x and y direction so you need to calculate for this and then we can calculate for this using uh, trigonometry okay so we can use trigonometry to find for the x and y component okay so let's look at what you are going to do so over here if i take cosine of the angle 23 okay that will equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse right and then hypotenuse will be f1 which is 200 okay so that will be adjacent which is f1 x divided by hypotenuse and then that will be the magnitude of the force f1 which is 200 newton so i'm going to have f f1 x to be equal to 200 multiplying cosine of cosine of 23 degrees okay so that will be f1x and then for the y component okay we will take sine of the angle 23 degrees that will be sine of 23 degrees will be equal to opposite right which will be f1y over hypotenuse and then that will be 200 newton so i'm going to have f1y to be equal to 200 sine of 23 degrees okay so that's for f1 we are going to do same for f2 also so let me draw f2 here so this is the x axis this is the y axis okay so let me draw f2 so let's see how this to be f2 and then that has let me reduce this a bit say that's 150 okay so that will make sense okay so let's make this be f2 and then that's 150 newton okay so it will have two components so this is the x component and then this is the y component okay so let me make this f2 y and then f2 x okay and then it makes an angle of 68 degrees with the positive x axis 
So this is what you have now. So let's find the component. So over here, you are going to have f2x to be equal to 150 cosine of 150 cosine of 68 degrees, and then I need to have f2y to be equal to 150 sine of 68 degrees. Okay, so when you look at this, you see that all the forces were in the first quadrant. Okay, all the forces were in the first quadrant. So we will have both the x and y component to be positive. Okay, that's why I have both the x and y component to be positive. So let's take note of that. So now, what you are going to do is that you are going to add all the x component and then add all the y component. Okay, so let's take the resultant force R. Okay, R will be equal to F1x. Okay. And then plus f2 x okay and then that is the s component of the resultant force okay so let me put i here okay i'm putting i here so that you know that it is in the so it is on the positive x axis or it is on the x axis okay then you're going to have plus f1 y okay plus f2 y okay and then over here i put j here okay we know that they are in the x and y direction okay but i just want us to still differentiate them you can choose to write this without the i and j okay so i need to have the resultant force okay in the component form to be that be 200 cosine of 23 degrees okay plus 150 cosine of 68 degrees okay and then let's put our let's bring our i okay and then plus they are going to have 200 sine of 23 degrees plus 150 sine of 68 degrees let's bring our j okay so now this is what you have so you have to do is to simplify this okay so let's simplify this here so i'll take the first bracket which is 200 cosine of 23 degrees plus 150 cosine of 68 degrees so that gives us a value of 240. Okay, okay, I okay, and then plus let's do what you have in the second bracket also. So that would be 200 sine 23 degrees plus 150 sine of 68 degrees. So that gives us 217.2. Then we have our J here. So this will be the resultant force, but we need the magnitude of this resultant force here. Okay, so let's calculate for that value let's calculate for the magnitude of the resultant force ok so for the magnitude of the resultant force are going to be the square root of the x component squared or the the one in the x axis direction okay so that would be 240.3 squared okay plus the second component to that would be 217.2 squared okay this is what we have now so let's find the magnitude of the resultant force so let's Square those two values and then add them. So 240.3 squared plus 217.2 squared. That gives me a value of 104919.93. Okay, so let's take the square root of that. So taking the square root of that value giving 3.5. 
three two three point nine newton. Okay, so that'll be the magnitude of the resultant force. So now you see that each of the forces each of the forces makes an angle an angle with the positive x axis. Okay. So what you have to do is that you must find the angle that the resultant force also makes with the positive x axis. And then we can do that by taking tan inverse of the the y component over the x component. Okay, so the angle that the resultant force will make which I name theta r will be equal to the tan inverse of the the y component of the resultant force over the x component of the resultant force. I'll name this rx over ry. Okay, where what we have here, everything we have here is Rx, and then everything we have here is Ry. Okay, I think I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be the other way around. It has to be. This has to be the tan inverse of Ry over Rx, okay, this rather. So now, we know the value of Ry and then the value of what Rx, let's substitute them in here. That will be equal to the tan inverse of Ry, which is 217.2, okay, divided by Rx, which is 240.3. Okay, so let's simplify what you have in the brackets okay so have tan inverse of so that will be 217.2 divided by 240.3 so that will give us 0 0.9038 so let's make it 904 okay so let's take the tan inverse of that so theta r will equal to the tan inverse of 0 0.904 and then that gives us an angle of 42.1 degrees so this will be the angle that the resultant force will make with the positive x as it so that's all for this video thank you very much for watching please make sure you like and subscribe